Hey guys, this is Kirov speaking and in today's episode of Great Engineer, Terrible Driver, we are going to design a 1946 commuter sedan in automation and hotlap it in BeamNG Drive on the automation test track. What driver score will I achieve today? We shall find out. 1946, just hammer this button until it stops. All right, commuter sedan. Uh, commuter sed Oh, let's go into the variant view. I think it's hidden behind behind a van. Yeah, exactly. It was hidden behind a, w a van. This one. This is not the van we are looking for. This is not the van you are looking for. The uh, commuter sedan. Hmm. Well, these two are perfect. Commuter is a demographic which is looking for a uh, maneuverable car. Uh, maneuverable in city traffic. And even though there was not much traffic in 1946, I think that these things down here with the 2.6 meter wheelbase would be slightly too large. And this time we are going to aim this thing at the Fruinian market. And they love, they love those small cars. Yes, they do. So which one do we take? Um, how are they different? The one is a two-door, the other is a four-door. We are going with this one, standard one, the first one. And so it begins, the journey of Kilrab Motors. And we are going to start out with steel. Uh, ladder frame, because uh, space frame is way, way too labor intensive. We are pretending we are producing this in a medium factory because the Fruinians will love this thing and just buy it in, in, in spades. Do you buy small cars like this in a dozen or something? I don't know. Uh, so, chassis material. Can we afford a galvanization plant? I think we can. And then we have front longitudinal and uh, well, the, that's the only thing that makes sense here. Uh, but we can go with semi-trailing arm. We don't want it to be too fancy. Yes, double wishbone front, fine. Okay, save some money. Give me semi-trailing arm. Oh, the engine. Oh, the engine. Um, inline threes back then are... Not compatible to large sizes, <laughs> not at all, but it needs to be dirt cheap. So I think I'm going with an inline free actually and make it small, really small. Maybe, well, what is small for an inline free, right? Um, probably something uh, that small in 1946. Small in modern standards for an inline free would be something like 900 cc to a liter. Large would be 1.2 liters. Maybe even up to 1.5 if they have like one part engine and 15 parts balancing shafts. Yes, that's how they work nowadays. But uh, 800 cc? Yeah. Yeah, let's go with an 800 cc engine. I think that is roughly appropriate for what we are aiming for here. Yeah. And because of how, how awesome we are, we are going with direct acting overhead cam. Holy shit, this thing is tiny! This fits in your pocket! Look at it! Ah, oh, cute! Conrad's... Oh, oh yeah, so we're going to rev it. Don't need any heavy-duty cast. The torque! The torque is real! We need heavy-duty cast pistons! <laughs> nah, nah, that's not happening. Uh, compression... Uh, we, are, we have to run this, this little thing lean. Lean like crazy. One thing that is holding us back really is that we can only have one carb on there if we are going for uh, for the standard option. And there's only the standard option. So uh, one barrel carb. Oh, okay. Lower this thing to cam profile 30-ish to start out with. Can always lower it later. And single barrel eco. Now the question is, do, does this one provide enough power? And I think it does, 25 kilowatts. Oh wait, that's horsepower. That's way much. I don't think the car will have that much power. Uh, standard, okay. No, we go. don't go with horse piss. We go with regular leaded. The single barrel eco carb has a uh, maximum AFR of 14.2 and uh, minimum of 15.0. And because we are going to do commuter car and commuters don't like paying out of their nose for, for gasoline after the war, especially, then I think we are setting it to 15.0. Super lean. 
that will mean that we probably have to reduce compression by another two points or something. Oh, let's do this. Uh, oh shit, this one. Um, although our ignition timing is pretty low. Maybe aim for 2500 RPM. Not too low, but uh, yeah, yeah. We can probably rev this thing to the moon because it's so tiny. 5000. That is to the moon, by the way, for 1946. Maybe 5500 even. But let's start with 5000. And we will be able to invest some quality into the fuel system too, because of how dirt cheap this thing is. Where's the cost even? 62? I didn't even spot the cost because it wasn't in the hundreds. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. A short cast header, that is way too much power. Uh, here we go, max power, 30. Yeah, minimum, minimum size, none and baffled. Oh shit, we're making a lot of power. Holy hell, 26 horsepower out of this beast of an engine. And that is super limited by the exhaust, as you can see. Limited by uh, one horsepower. We could even go for cast log manifold, but uh, I think that's overdoing it a bit. That loses us a whole horsepower and... Oh shit, no, that is pretty bad. Loses us 0.4% uh, engine efficiency. Yep, not good. But that was pretty good for optimization for first run, so uh, let's just amp this one up and give us one extra cam so that we don't run into any knock. Nice curve! This looks very drivable. Ha, oh, super torquey down low! 54 newton meters of torque! Wow! So now let's see how much quality we can put into this without uh, straining our budget. So currently this is so damn dirt cheap, it's it's amazing. And let's see, up this. Yeah, it's still looking good. I'm just looking at these numbers, by the way. I'm not even looking at the quality over here. Um, I think something like this might be okay. Production units should be kept down. Plus six, wow. Oh, that's good. Plus six, we can probably even rev this higher. Yeah, it revs to 5.7. So I was correct in my assumption of 5.5 uh, before don't want to overdo it because they value their reliability we've just given them uh, given them a lot of reliability check this value out so 41.8 and we started at 37.9 yep that's that's pretty solid okay perfect engine let's continue from here oh no wait ah because we upped the fuel system quality we can now amp up the compression and we can... Oh no! 27 was much nicer a number. Oh, there we have 31. And it's fine. Ignition timing can also go up by... Oh! 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 Gets a little bump there. I quite like that bump. I want to keep it. Oh no, the bump disappears again. Yeah, that's good. Oh! She can even put... One. Ah, no, it's almost, almost there. Yes. Now I'm happy. The finest of torque curve tweaking with Kilrob Motors. Now our intakes are holding us back, and that is the uh, uh, that's the carb. It doesn't breathe. If you switch to a uh, single barrel, you get so much more power. Look at how much more power we're getting, but also lower efficiency. Now, now it is time to select the body. Uh, four door. Yes. Oh, so cute. And make the nose smaller. We don't need that space. And make the rear... Oh, the rear can only get... <laughs> yeah. You, you need to grab big groceries. Um, we, we don't quite need that much space, I would say. A little larger, because they value practicality. And that gives us a bit practicality. The engine is in the front. And if we can, we are going with... Um, Front wheel drive, longitudinal front wheel drive, but yeah, this one would rebalance it a little bit more. They do value a small size, but I think making this the booty a little larger means that you can grab more um, more cargo, and that increases practicality. And a commuter car values practicality. But we shall make it super aerodynamic. As always, we leave the design of the visuals for later, and it's true for paint and the fixtures. 
Okay, of course, longitudinal front wheel drive wasn't a thing back then, so we do have to run the drive train all the way back there. But it, <laughs> it weighs 14 kilos. <laughs> what is this running on? A string or something? <laughs> How many ratios do we need? Three? Like two normal gears and one overdrive? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or do we want to go with four? Considering that it's uh, eco-relevant, we might want to go with one full mega overdrive gear. And spacing... Uh, spacing such that third gear goes to 100 and that is our effective top speed? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, why not? Yeah. I think that makes sense. And then you have fourth gear just as an overdrive gear that would go theoretically to 152 kilometers an hour. No one would ever dare to give that fast in this thing. And hard long life tires. Because grip. Uh, no, not because grip. Uh, because cornering. No, no, bad gear up. Not because of cornering. Because... Mm, because costs. Yes, yes, you found it, gear up. Because costs. I would like to run this on 14s. Is there... Oh. And we have to run it 125... Whoa, that's some serious rimage for uh, 1946. I don't think we need that much. So let's up to 135 again. Pretty wide tires for the day. Looks sporty as fuck. Okay. Oh, the options. The options are killing me. There's too much. What should I choose? Um, but yeah, I made the... Uh, the rims larger, partially because I need to fit uh, bigger size tires, uh, bigger size tires, in the tires. <laughs> Yo, bro, I heard you like tires. Um, so, yeah, uh, 250s, 250s front, probably around 200s rear. And we want to go get away with as low pad type as possible, 30 would be optimal. But, um, yeah, we shall see where we end up. And I assume we can afford some quality here. Let's put a plus two in it. Under tray quality, none. Uh, not quality, but rather the other thing. Uh, five people, nah. Four, four people is better. And we go with a standard. Oh my, no, that is way too expensive. None it has to be. I don't think they can pay for this. Can go with like super low quality. Aha, oh, you get a shitty premium AM radio. Nah, no, that doesn't really work. Doesn't make it that much cheaper. Safety, advanced 40s because people are driving this thing. And oh my god, this looks terrible. Where are our stats? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, do you spot the flaw in this one? Yeah, that's a good question. Question. Um, what does the comfort modifier say up there in the bump graph? Yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. This this is this is like the worst track car ever. Uh, that doesn't work. So what kind of? Oh, <laughs> two hertz. <laughs> yeah, two hertz and a damping stiffness or a da damping uh, damp coefficient yes that's correct not dampening coefficient how wet do you get when you see this car not not so wet right now as it's still not designed but you I promise you you will get really wet afterwards I will make it sexy so um, yeah this this setup is awful oh uh, what do we tune it to just uh, ballpark figures first normal and BAM commuter is there pin it so why does this car suck at commuter, Killer Rob? Well, look at the setup we have here. The setup is that of a sports car. At least the steering behavior is. So let's uh, take a look at the wheels and see if they... Combined costs, 109. That's not much. So we can go different tire sizes. And then I would say that we want to go down. But 115s is too little. Uh, 120s is uh, pretty close. Commuter loves it. So now we can do some fine tuning. Or oh, have the rest of the suspension. This is looking decent enough. 
So with the sway bars, we try to tame the rest and get the drivability up a little, I guess. Yeah, but that helped slightly. Uh, 99.7. No, some sway bar magic. We want to lower it in the front. 99.9. Nine, 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 nine. Yeah, that's as close as we get. But I have an issue here. And that issue is called bottoming out. How do you get rid of bottoming out? Well, either by getting more ride height, but I think this one is looking pretty ridiculous already. Yeah, it is. Let's actually lower this a bit. Yeah, this is about right. I mean, it's... Uh, it's supposed to be drivable, after all. Uh, so, let's put up the graphs again. And that's 7 roll angle. But a lot of bottoming out. Bottom out means we need to stiffen up the suspension. Oh yeah, it's mainly in the rear. It was bottoming out in the rear. And now I need to adjust the front to catch up. And there we have it. It's balanced again, as you can see. Beautiful setup. And all bottoming out is gone and we have a more reasonable roll angle too. Yeah, good setup. So now, gearing. How, d how did the gearing go? Oh, this worked out exactly as I wanted to. I wanted it to be like dead there. That's our maximum speed. And then once you shift, you you actually die and like go back this this line down here and to zero because there's no power available. 125 rating. Sounds good to me. 9 liters by 100 Ks. Uh, yeah, okay, could be better. But now cooling. Uh, I think they do want to have a bit more cooling. Yeah, not too much. And still increases a bit. It's the reliability thing, because they are driving a lot. They want to have a reliable car. But also, they have uh, a high rating on fuel. 20%! Wow. That is very high. So it doesn't help that much. They value their reliability at 10%. And they value their fuel economy more. So diminishing returns it is for cooling airflow. But what if we increase the quality? Do they actually like that? Make it faster. No, they, they actually don't. Oh shit, I, I did select the premium. That wasn't, wasn't my intention. There we go. Shit, I almost missed this. Like, oh, why does no one like my car? Well, maybe because no one fucking can afford it. Here we go. Uh, none. None is perfect. Now for the brakes. Uh, well, the brake setup doesn't look too terrible. No fade. We have a stopping distance of 70 meters from top speed. <laughs> 101 is our top speed, so this is basically top speed braking performance. 70 meters. Yeah, that's good enough for a car like this back in the day. You could put it like at 60. They actually do like that a bit. Some better brakes, but there are diminishing returns up here. Yeah, around 50 seems to be optimal. And even more brake quality is helping them. Oh, that was too much. Diminishing returns. And a little bit more premium standard interior. I'm happy. I'm very happy with this build. Technically, this is... This is sound. I'm loving it. And now, let's check out the mo oh, Holy shit! Wow! That is a very solid build. This is very good. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. But we wanted to see Furinia. So, let's check Furinia. Yeah, almost equally as good. But now, the time has come. To design this little thing. Yeah, uh, Kerob, uh, do, do your worst.
It is done. It is done. It is complete. Look at it. So beautiful. There you go. So much effort was spent in on this. No, not, not really. I mean, these 1946 cars are a little bit more simple than... Uh, than uh, more modern cars and not as many grills and all that kind of shit going on so I try to keep it simple yet somewhat elegant and not too much chrome like not luxury barge levels of chrome but still a little chromey because not everyone can have a car not everyone can have chrome so ah look how nice look how nice it even has side indicators and I didn't forget the single Wing mirror. Yeah, I, I think I went overboard of actually including the um, the blinkers on the side. That's not needed. But I do have a single rear reversing light. I think that's good. And the door handle being in, in this kind of configuration with the badge looks uh, somewhat neat. And the recall to the front, of course. That is, that is why I did that. I tried to repeat the design elements as well as I could. And I think back in the day they only needed one number plate. Maybe it was actually in the front that it was needed and not in the rear. But countries to countries it's different of course. So uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with the design and it's scoring well and everything is fine. The only thing is missing is name and track time. All right, let's have another look around. This is the Vitus. The Vitus Esplanade, or Esplanade depending on how you want to pronounce it, uh, with the Volga R3 800E. Perfect. And with these markets, what could possibly go wrong on the track? Let's have a look. Oh, the acceleration. Oh, uh, it isn't that slow. How much does... Oh, wow, it only weighs 652 kilograms. Well, uh, top speed 101. Um, but... Yeah, that's all solid, I would say. Quarter mile time of 23.85. <laughs> Zero to 100. Well, 100 is 101 is its top speed, so yeah. Now it takes 42.5 seconds. Oh, it can go flat out for a Brian's bend. It's amazing. Oh, we are approaching the downhill section. Oh, it's accelerating so fast. It has to shift. And it's still accelerating. 106 kilometers. Whoa! Uh, not bad. Reaching 120 kilometers an hour. 21. For a 101 kilometer an hour car. <laughs> and flat out through the slingshot. The downforce is real. And to the line. Oh my god, this takes a while. 3.39.71. And I think while. Well, it might not be quite as authentic. Ah, no, it probably is. But blue, blue seems like a good color for this car. The the mud brown, I actually called it that, <laughs> mud brown, wasn't too pretty. So let's give this car a little pretty color as well. And there it is, the Vitos Esplanade. Ah, oh, look how cute it is. Such a beautiful little car. And... Brick? Oh yeah, brakes are working. So what does it sound like? I never tested the engine. So... Yeah, okay, it revs up very quickly. <laughs> There's no mass behind it, so... Alright, I'm going to take this for a test drive, but of course, stick shift it is. It's full manual. And... Yeah, four gears. Should all be good. Of course, I'm using the clutch as well. So, um, yeah, give me a bit of warmth, and then we get right into the test track time. What a fantastic little car. <laughs> it is so slow, but somehow it has so much charm to it. Even how it drives, it's wonderful. Okay, let's give this one a hot lap. And we are ready to start. Here we go. First gear, rev, go! Oh my god, yes. And no braking here. <laughs> it is so slow that we don't have to brake for the S's. It's awesome. Come on, gain speed. K 
can take the perfect line for you. The steering is awesome though, it's very precise. Brian's bend coming up at maximum throttle. <laughs> and now braking. Braking? Late braking. And careful braking. Oh, wow, slidey bend. Yes, awesome. Let's go. Go, go, go. And the best thing ever. We can take Caswell's carousel at maximum throttle. No braking, nothing. Go on, steer. Yes, very high line throw there. Not optimal, but I mean, who cares? This car doesn't. It's all about energy retention. And fourth. For a short amount of time, downhill. We are not getting to the same speeds as an automation. 103 seems to be the top. And first when I drop to 98 or something I'm going to shift down. Because I don't want to lose those two three kilometers here. But now it's going uphill again. And third, yes. Almost lost no speed there. Good. And Bavarian bent. Scary times. Scary times, but look at this performance. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. And just a little lift off and full throttle again. <laughs> lift off brings the car around and then just goes straight again. Awesome. And now Killer Rob Chicane coming up at warp speed. 50 meters to go. Ah, clean line through here, full throttle. We're getting there, I promise. Adam Sapix coming up. And a little touch on the brake. This should be good. Yeah, good line, good line. Come on, keep it. Full this is full throttle, nothing happens. And now my question is, can we take Cossack Corner at full throttle without lifting off? I think we can. Come on. Come on, little car. Yes. Yes, perfect. <laughs> uh, here we have to do some braking, though. But not too much. 60. Yes, take it wide. Oh, bumps coming up. Yeah, nice. I think that was a pretty good lap. Come on, to the line. Go, 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 go. Whoa. Oh, yes. 3.38 to 22. And we're back in automation with the results. The Vitus, the Vitus Esplanade, has a cracking vehicle to drive. Such, such a cruiser. So much fun. It is all about energy retention. <laughs> and uh, on the automation test track, uh, the time was, by Automation Stig, 3 minutes, 39.71. I managed a 3.38.22, which gives us a driver score of 100.7. Yes, while we didn't reach quite as much top speed, I think I was doing pretty well getting somewhat efficient lines through the corners and uh, retaining energy a little bit better. Anyways, that concludes today's episode, but you will find the Vitos Esplanade down in the description below as the .car file. You can import it into automation and then drive it yourself in BeamNG Drive. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.